In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our family, our meditation today is on building your temporal and spiritual arcs now. Recently, I was asked to participate in a very masculine devotional entitled Exodus 90. Initially, it was established by a holy priest to aid seminarians to leave behind the ways of the world and enter into their formation to be men for others. Essentially, Exodus 90 is a very spiritually focused 90 days, more than twice the size of Lent. It's a, a focus that regards three specific areas, prayer, asceticism, and fraternity. Well, as to prayer, during those 90 days, one intentionally incorporates a holy hour each day. By the way, we're supposed to be doing this anyway, but nobody's doing it. If you're not doing it, you better do a reality check uh, on where your soul is in relation to Almighty God. So it incorporates a holy hour each day, and the holy hour can encompass many things, certainly prayer, that usually includes the Holy Rosary, but also spiritual reading. And, and the book we're using in this Exodus 90 group is that renowned spiritual masterpiece, Imitation of Christ. As to asceticism, one entered into it very specifically by disengaging from creature comforts to which we become habitualized, such as no alcohol. Try that for 90 days. No TV. Try that for 90 days. No excess time surfing the net outside of a job-related requirement. Also, cold showers. And for some, that's the deal breaker. As a fraternity, like most successful spiritual endeavors, one does not try to do this all alone, but with a group of like-minded people who provide fraternity in the midst of this. And that's important because it provides a certain accountability. It's a once-a-week gathering in person or in some form of like a Zoom, so that each week you see those brothers that you're going through this with, each representing the, fa representing the families that they are called to lead as men. Well, the opening prayer gives you some sense, the opening prayer that we pray at the start of each of these meetings, gives you some sense of the pr prayer, asceticism, and fraternity, and it reads like this. Lord Jesus, you are commanding us to be men for others. You are commanding us to leave behind old ways, to deny selfish desires, to embrace daily hardships with joy, and to orient our lives completely to you. Help us each day to learn what it means to lay down our lives for our friends through a disciplined life of prayer, asceticism, and fraternity. Give us a desire to follow you in all things. Give us joy in suffering and the courage to lead others to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this fraternity. May you continue to work through these men to challenge each other to be the men they are called to be, men for others. And there it is, the devotional and the prayer that underlies it. Well, to be honest, I, I, didn't, I didn't know what I was getting myself into and after I realized it, I called up the great Father Rick Heilman. He's, he's my hero. He's what a holy shepherd of souls he is. He, he's holy. I'd never claim to be holy. That guy, that priest is holy. Well, I, I called him up because I wanted his inside information on Exodus 90 because I thought he was the one that was responsible for, for creating this in the first place. And I wanted, I wanted to know what he was thinking when he came up with the asceticism part, specifically the cold showers. <laughs> well, as it turns out, it wasn't him that started it. Rather, it was another gifted priest. So I went to the main page of, main online page of Exodus 90 and, and found there that the, the main page asked a very funny question. How is that working out for you? How is the habit of binge watching TV shows, wasting your time on your cell, Overeating, over drinking, how's that all working out for you? Well, whatever might be our bad habits of choice, they're not working out well for us. One look at the world around us sees, lets us see, with eyes to see, that the world's falling apart. 
bad habits. These bad habits are standing in the way of our spiritual development and our ability to lead others to Christ. I was looking at this, I was thinking, well, these are modern habits. Our bad habits of choice, like the cell phone, like the TV, like overeating, over drinking. And they seem to be of modern origin. But the average Amish guy, none of these are an issue. Because Amish don't have TVs. They don't, so they don't binge watch. And they don't have cell phones. So they're not wasting time on that. And I have yet to see an overweight Amish person because they're working hard in the fields, tending the crops, tending the animals. So I was thinking maybe this whole thing should be called Amish 90. Because I, I couldn't figure out what has that got to do with Exodus, what the Jews went through way back in, uh, well, 3,400 years ago. So I read on and found out again that this was created by a Catholic priest and this was the reason why. He wanted us to exit from, to have an exodus from all these bad habits. Because he was assigned to a seminary in 2011 and quote, when he arrived, he realized that as, as good as the intentions of these young men were in their desire to serve the church, many idols plagued them. They were not free to be who God was calling them to be for God's people. So he established this Exodus 90 program, which can be summed up in three words, die to self. Unless you think that's some pious tripe, just remember what Jesus said, that there is no greater life, no greater love than to lay down one's life for another, to die to self for another. My dear family, we will never get so far as to lay down our lives for another unless we start practicing it little by little each day. So the reason for this Exodus 90, leaving behind the world for 90 days, can be summed up in that spiritual masterpiece, The Imitation of Christ, that we're going through, Book 1, Chapter 6, that is entitled, Unbridled Affections. Quote, True peace of heart, then, is found in resisting passions, not in satisfying them. There is no peace in the carnal man, in the man given to vain attractions, but there is peace in the fervent and spiritual man. Well, amen, as I've said to you before, I say it again, hell is coming as a direct result of the wanton indulgence, wanton debauchery we see every day in the world around us. So prepare now, prepare now, seriously, build your temporal arcs, build your spiritual arcs. In Exodus 90, letting go of that carnal and focusing on the spiritual is the best devotional I've ever seen to help guide you through this. Men, husbands, fathers, and brothers, build your arcs now. Practice laying down your lives now. So that when the cataclysm comes, whether individually for each one of us, as it always does sooner or later, or universally, as it seems to be happening ever since about March 15, 2020, you will rise above the flood of hell temporarily, temporarily and spiritually. In doing so, you will be able to lead your families down the narrow road to heaven that so few others ever will find. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.